Hello, hello, good day. And um, so this is week two. We're going to be talking about the architectural drawing system. So back in the day, there was no drawing on paper for architectural illustrations. So paper only became abundant during the Renaissance period or the 15th century. The notion of illustrating architectural proposals was mainly done by artisans. So, so these are mainly the master builders. So normally what they did was during, during medieval times was they discuss the work for the day with other artisans to create architecture like cathedrals. So there was no such thing as the architect who designs. When paper became abundant, uh, the notion of the designer architect came into being. He's not now the main supervisor of the building site. Rather, he has evolved now to as a think worker rather than the physical and planner at the same time. So finally, when, when paper was invented, what happened was he now has the ability to propose designs or to plan them ahead before the construction. This also gave him the advantage of uh, proposing and presenting this to people, to the public or to the client to gain a, a bit more confidence or to, to convince them into building the proposed building. Henceforth, the early architect not, was not now anymore limited to per project. He could do multiple projects because he can illustrate them on paper at first and distribute them amongst the physical workers or the construction workers on site. And he would just visit them to see the progress of each project. So he has multiple projects. He could handle five projects at the same time because his design has been recorded on paper and has been replicated or made copies of. So before before all the, before paper we could see that the uh, some evidences like in uh, Egyptian architecture was carved on stone the proportions or some notion of a record and, and illustrating something to other people so that they get the idea. It could be as simple as drawing onto an area of sand with a stick, relaying the idea, the main idea to the workers in order to build. So these proposals are actually three-dimensional. They are not yet built. And yet the job of the architect is to design them and to envision them and to relay it to um, other people. So these other people are the different aspects of the project. For example, the client who is go most probably the person who is financing this so here is also uh, sometimes the architect needs to convince the administrators of the city to approve that structure that he is proposing of course you can only do this with a bunch of drawings a set of drawings so that everyone is clear on it's what is going to be built so with this concept it's actually um a multi-drawing set that he is creating with for the architectural ideas that he has or the proposal. Now, let, let's take this cube for example. If this is an architecture which is going to be on the ground, so this sheet of paper is the ground and this is the architecture and if this is a scaled thing, a person, if this is a three meter by three meter, a person's height would be standing like so, halfway of this. When you illustrate this for as a proposal for architecture, there are the different types of uh, architectural drawing norms or systems that we can discuss now. Drawing on paper is a two-dimensional medium. So let's discuss on the systems of architectural drawings. Let's let's categorize the drawings into two different types. We have the two-dimensional or 2D and we have the three-dimensional or 3D. Now when we go for two-dimensional, of course we are always talking about something that is three-dimensional but it's going to be illustrated in a two-dimensional format. We have something that is called orthographic. So ortho means linear. 
something something linear and straight so this is a series of what is considered as multiple drawings describing one object if we take the cube that i showed you a while ago if i illustrate it in elevation this is going to be the ground and i draw it as a square and if i'm going to add a person standing since this is three meters by three meters this is the front elevation and if i illustrate the right side of this cube it will still show up as a square and if i try to illustrate the top it would still show up as so as square now a cube is very simple so it's it's relatively the same thing that you are going to illustrate except that the only difference between the top and the elevation is that in the elevations you show the ground line if i'm going to go for the 3d version of this the most common three-dimensional and easy to do type of illustration is the isometric isometric which is iso means equal i can now discuss on the linear axis okay so the linear axis of of anything mathematically so we are all familiar with this the x y and z in isometric the the conventions of of illustrating in isometric is derived from a circle now the circle if we divide into three to represent the three axis each would have a degree of 120 degrees and if we extend these things this will be divided into 60 degrees the axis can is going to be derived from this so this is going to be your z which is the up here is going to be your x and that would be your y x y and z now the other axis uh, directions of these shall be in the negative so this is going to be negative x and this is going to be negative z and that would be negative y now if we place in the this in the context of the cube and this is the horizon line for this this shall be then 30 degrees 30 degrees because if you have this angle of a 60 that would be 30 degrees so in essence this method of illustrating the cube differs from the two-dimensional orthographic which is linear so this is 30 degrees if you construct this with your drafting equipment so this would be somehow the front and this would be the right and of course this is going to be the top and if you realize i just illustrated this cube with the isometric method with one diagram describing the front right and top drawings of the orthographic so in, in essence these things illust is illustrating the same thing but in a different methodology so this is the orthographic is more of the multi-drawing convention so the multi-drawing convention is that you have to look at all these drawings and decipher it and come to the conclusion that it is a cube that the form is indeed a cube whereas the isometric gives you cues that it is it's likely that you perceive it as a cube so it's easy enough to understand uh, but some of the things i have not included in the isometric is the hidden lines edge which is the illustration the edges behind the object so what we're trying to illustrate is exactly is the edges of these objects okay so what am i talking about what are these edges the edges of course are these those ed these are the edges that i'm pointing at the where the surfaces 
would change directions. And these are these edges are what you perceive currently. If I turn around, I turn these things, you can see a number of edges. You can only perceive these edges, of course, when you are looking at them or seeing them. And if I turn around, they are very similar in terms of these edges. So a cube is very simple, right? But what if we we have the same cube, but now we're going to be chopping them, chopping a, uh, taking off some of its volume. We are going to cut some of its volume. Let's say that, you know, you start out with the cube and you subtract a portion of this and it's gone and you end up having something like this. So it's going to be illustrated differently than just all squares. It would differ because, you know, the part of it has gone. So if the top side is going to be looking more like this, and if we go to the right side, let's say that would look the same as a square. Same, the same, it would look the same as for both. But if we turn around, say the rear, it would be the same. But on the left, it would be different. And of course, the front would be different as well. So the series of cues for drawing orthographic would, would, would take some, some level of deciphering what the object is based on the linear drawings of the edges. So the edge for, for this very strange uh, uh, form, you need to illustrate this in such a manner or such a distinct way to differentiate from a regular cube. So going back to the diagrams, and so this is going to be your regular cube on the, the, the first set that we did. Now, if I copy this, these objects and I will now try to illustrate the chopped off cube it would be something like this this is going to be the front and this is going to be the right side and if we're going to illustrate of course the top partially it's going to be erased there in that part and this edge is something like this and I need to emphasize on this area, this edge, to be a, a bit thicker, to give cues that it is much more forward than the rest. And this one, the line edge here is illustrated darker. To emphasize that this face or surface is more front, that this surface is more front. And this surface is much more closer to the viewer. Those are the cues in order to read these things. So in essence, the thicker line would illustrate some sort of spatial arrangement or spatial configuration when we say spatial. So that's the convention of conveying distances. Other things in the convention of architectural drawing, first we have your isometric. There are other parallel types of drawings which uh, we will not entirely cover like ax axonometric and our other types of parallel, but isometric is the most common type of parallel linear type of drawing which is considered to be in the category of 3D. So other 3D types of drawing would be perspectives. Now, of course, you may have heard about this already. So there's the one point, two point, three point perspective. One point is normally the linear if this is a room and if it's a cut through. 
person is there because of the one point. These parallel lines are converging to one point of the room. If this is a section or a, a view of a room. Two point is when you have vanishing points, which are normally in the horizon line. If I'm going to illustrate the same cube, it would be something like this. So a vanishing point would be somewhere there. The other vanishing point would be somewhere there. This is connected to the axis. So the axis here is the Z going up here. And this is going to the Y axis, for example. But this is how we perceive the world, in, mostly in two-point or multi-point type. So the three-point is it's a more complex type. You likely perceive this with when you are up in the sky and looking down at buildings, or you are in a tall building and you're looking at smaller types of buildings, where if you take See the rooftop, it goes like this. So it's tapering because of its length. What's here, because the top side is closer to the viewer, this is drawn bigger. And then the lower part would be drawn smaller. So those are cues for distances also. And this is, that phenomenon is called foreshortening. If we have two similar objects that are equal, if one is closer to the viewer and the other one is farther away, like so, this, the farther away object is drawn smaller. Then the same object closer to the viewer is drawn bigger. So if we, we take a look at these two objects again, they're practically the same. So if we go the distance, one is closer and one is farther away, first the farther away is smaller and the nearest one is, is perceived as bigger. So this one, say this is the X axis and that would dissipate and the same thing as the Y axis and this one, the Z, would taper down to a vanishing point somewhere there. So that's three point. But three point is, is a misnomer. You, you have multi points. In actuality, in real life, you would see multi points of objects because they would be in different positions, different forms, different orientations, different sizes. These are guidelines to simplify something that we are trying to, to draw, either out of imagination or an idea that we have in order to illustrate it in reality. Designs are usually born first at first from your mind and is born usually on paper first. We will move on to something more complex than something as simple as a cube. So anyway, this is just simple classifications of architectural drawings that are most commonly used for illustrating architecture or illustrating proposals for design.